Wrestling League Season 20 has officially begun, and we are starting out with what appears to be a new evolution, a new emanation of the serpentine sensation of Monster Union, the snake-style practitioner, He Beat Sky. With a deadly, focused look in his eyes, the hood of the cobra fully extended as an as a, an, a threat to his opponent tonight. But Habit Sky, not the only one with something new up his sleeve in this new generation of the Animated Wrestling League, WWE 2K22, finally on the AWL. <laughs> Took so long to make the transfer, I hate doing this. And his opponent, making his from the center of the sun, Brand new look for Eruption Solar, the solar powered superhero of the animated wrestling league on the night when all the champions of the Joshi division will be in our main event. It's a champion showcase. Joshi tag team champions versus the Joshi champion and the Canadian national champion. Two on two in the main event. And speaking of tag teams, Eruption Solar coming off a disappointing performance in the Tag Team Tournament, the Forge the Four Tournament, last week. But right now, it's a new day, a new season, a new episode, a new match, a new opponent, and we are looking for some incredible professional wrestling action. Thank you for joining us here in the Animated Wrestling League. Please subscribe, uh, give us a like, give us a comment, whatever you can do. Very much appreciate it. Bang a gong. We are on 10 minutes on the clock. AWL rules in effect here in the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area, for AWL Strong and Free, the Canadian branch of the league. And some hard shots by Eruption Solar going immediately for. Oh, I thought he was going to go for submission hold here, but instead, some grounded uh, cross face punches, actually attacking with his own scales, with the rough texture of the scales on his forearm to do more damage to the face of Eruption Solar, but the high fly Lucha Libre stylings of the, of the solar flare of Lucha Libre, Eruption Solar. This is going to be speed, and well, Hibit's guy, no slouch in the speed department. This is very much going to be a speed versus technique, and look at that slithering up, down, and around the ropes, and right back through as the official begins the 20 count on the outside that we have here in the AWL. And once again, Three. and the referee deciding that will not constitute uh, leaving the ring, Four. the slithering serpent that is Hebitsky of Monster Union. And of course, you see the manipulator, the witch, that brought together these monsters and beasts of folklore and legend to create the Monster Union Stable. Hard right hands, a couple of really hard shots there as Habitsky takes control. A little bit later tonight, we can have a non-title tag team match. The Tiger Brothers making their first appearance since winning the Tag Team Championship of the World. They will be facing off against the intergenerational tag team, Matt Classic, Matt Classic 2, House Classic, a little bit later. And we've got two regular season and singles match debuts in the Animated Wrestling League. We've got Edith Surreal, big get for the AWL. Edith Surreal versus the newest augment, and that is Project Titan. Cover for the one, two, kick out. Kick out at the last possible second by Eruption Solar. Hard shots by Hevitsky. Both of these men looking to raise their win-loss ratios, looking to rise up in the ranks, maybe get themselves a championship match, get themselves into the best four. Because right now, there's no secondary singles title in the men's division here in Canada. The Canadian National Championship is now the exclusive property of the Joshi division, which means for these uh, wrestlers in singles competition, there is only the AWL Grand Championship that they can compete with. So they are looking to make some serious gains. A win on a stage as big as the season premiere, 
that helps you. That moves you up in the, in the slot. That moves you up in the ranks. And a big stop. Of course, both these men tag team wrestlers as well. Hebitsky and Monster Union. Rupsi and Solar in the solar wings alongside the rock. T-H-E-R-O-C. Check the spelling. Oh, painful looking takedown by Hebitsky. He's gonna, oh, wait a minute, the mist! That, that Cobra Venom. Dogugiri, if you want to call it that. The mist into the cover. One, two, no! Eruption Solar somehow kicking out of that. But he has got to have been blinded. The mask, he, he's, he doesn't have, he's got some mesh in the mask there that may have protected him, but not by much. He's wrestling half blind now. Habitsky blinding his opponent with the Cobra Venom. That poison attack. And now, oh, neck breaker. That softens up the neck to the snake bite. And Habitsky at the top rope, this is not his usual thing. He wants his opponent to stand. He's going up. Sna no, he went for the snake bite. A top rope snake bite, but countered into a clothesline. Desperation counter by Eruption Solar. And now going, he's going for the move bequeathed to him by Jushin Thunder Liger, the Romero Special. I've seen him tap people, well, I've seen him make people submit with this, but the problem with that move is if any part of the combination falls apart, you're done. And now the Snake Man with the Anaconda Vice locked in. These wrestlers trading their signature submission holds. We've seen high-flying action, we've seen striking, we've seen submissions. All wrestling styles are welcome in the Animated Wrestling League. There is no such thing as an AWL style. We bring it all to you here in this league. Into the cover, one, two, three, and that's it. It beats Sky with more than a little dirty tactics. And let's see, we got to look at that. Yeah, look at that, the mist, that Cobra Venom right in the face. Into the Anaconda Vice. And he transitions from the Anaconda Vice straight to the cover. And that's actually really smart. But a tainted win, in my opinion, nonetheless. Here is your winner, Hebitsky. Hebitsky from Monster Union picking up that all-important season premiere victory. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, on the season premiere, for some reason, this asshole has requested some time. Don't ask me why, don't ask me why the KWL Commissioner allowed this to happen, but apparently he did. And the fans not exactly happy with this, and I don't blame them. Alright, Thug Life Tanaka Kenichi, the biggest douchebag in the Animated Wrestling League, if you ask me, and also, in terms of win-loss records, our worst wrestler. He's been in the Boxamania Danger Zone, the match at the season finale, where you have to fight to keep your contract. He's been in that match, I think he's been in almost all of them, including last season. But apparently he's requested some microphone time, and we have one of our trainees from the AWL Dojo at ringside. I don't know what he's doing there. But he's dressed to compete. I, I, I don't know if there's a match actually scheduled here. Not on my run sheet, but... By the way, this guy cut pretty much every English class through middle school and high school. Well, he is technically correct. Champions do not compete in Botsamania. But he's saying he will be a champion this season. And I'm being told we are going to have an exhibition match here against a trainee from the AWL Dojo. We have reinstituted our Young Dragon program. And going up for an Usagi DDT. When did he learn the rabbit style? But yeah, this um, this young wrestler, a trainee at the dojo, not quite ready for his graduation match yet. But the head trainer, the original AWL champion, Dragon, has decided or has requested to the commissioner reinstate the Young Dragon program. So expect to see some of these trainees in getting these opportunities at ring time with veteran AWL wrestlers, although not much you're going to learn from Thug Life Tanaka Kenichi except how to be a better cheater. Ooh, 
hard shot right to the face, right to the mask. We make them wear those masks so that if they embarrass themselves here, because these are unproven talent, they're kids, they're rookies, they're trainees, they're students. If they embarrass themselves and then they come back with their, re with their face revealed, you're not going to remember that they, you know, made complete idiots out of themselves. But thug and the crowd just booing the heck out of this, booing Thug Life Tanaka Kenichi, as is, as is properly deserved. And if you want to skip ahead to the next chapter, I do not blame you. Coming up next, we're going to have a Joshi Division singles match. Edith Surreal will make her AWL debut. And the singles debut of Project Titan, two wrestlers that met in the Canadian National Championship six-way scramble about a week and a half ago. And going up DDT. And a standing star, the second time he's gone for that standing star. Of course, Dragon's going to teach the Dragon Star to a bunch of these kids. Oh, down we go. And a kick right to the boot. Oh, flying kick. An impressive flying kick over a German suplex and throws him. I don't know who this masked rookie is, but he's got talent. He's got some skill. Again, third time, that same mistake. He goes for that... Standing star press that gets a punch to the face. Technically an illegal strike, but the referee not calling it. As Thug Life, Tanaka Kalichi looking to finish this off. And he's got it. Niigata Street Cutter. The Niigata Street Cutter into the one, two, three. What a lazy cover that is. And now talking trash to a rookie who literally hasn't even earned his face. Bullshit. We take a look at the Niigata Street Cutter. As Thug Life Tanaka Kenichi picks up a rare win in his AWL career. What? Okay. Next week, champion? Okay, translating that out of idiot. Here is your winner. All right. Well, he's saying that next week he's going to be a champion, but I can promise you he's not facing Project Tetsu for the AWL Grand Championship, so what the hell is he talking about? Edith Surreal, a massive star on the independent scene in the United States, now here in Canada for the Animated Wrestling League. We're very happy to have her here. She made her AWL debut in the Joshi six-way scramble and got into it with her opponent tonight. The following contest is ready for one fall in the Joshi division. You can receive it first, making her regular season debut, Edith Surreal. Edith Surreal is a graduate of the Chikara Wrestle Factory. She has reclaimed her own identity. On the independent circuit in the United States, you can uh, see her on IWTV, quite frequently independent wrestling television. And she is a future megastar, I believe, and we are very lucky. She is a big get for the Canadian branch of the Animated Wrestling League. If we were still only operating out of Japan, it would be impossible to get a talent like Eva Surreal. And we've got her, I think, basically full time this season. At the six-way scramble match, which you can still go back and watch on our YouTube channel. This creature made her debut, got into it with Edith Surreal. The newest member of Dr. Jigoku's bastardization of the mad science. The newest female augment, Dr. Jigoku, said he was not satisfied with the performance of Kaizo Beast and Koroshi Machine. They have been removed from the organization. Please read whatever sinister uh, connotations into that you will. But the mad scientist already controls the AWL Grand Championship in the form of Project Tetsu 3.0. 
his newest project, Project Titan, here to make her regular season debut not successful in becoming Canadian national champion. You will see the true Canadian national champion later tonight. But right now, Subite Jigoku Hakase no Tameni, all for Dr. Jigoku. Ten minutes on the clock. The rules for the women are the same as the men. Hard right hand and a leg sweep by Edith Surreal, showing her extensive training as a professional wrestler. A great spokeswoman for the community as well. Going up to the red rope, the, ro the sorry, the white rope. <laughs> Still thinking I'm back in Japan. And, oh, down and an arm drag. Diving arm drag from the white rope, the middle strand. To counter the height disadvantage and now going for the Fujiwara armbar. Great transition from that. Uh, that takedown, that Japanese arm drag into the Fujiwara armbar by Edith Surreal, a skilled tactician. And of course, looking at both looking at Project Titan and knowing Dr. Jigoku's fetish for giants, for powerhouses, we can assume that Project Titan, if she's ever able to get out of first gear, will be the, the powerhouse of the division. Will try to be the powerhouse of the division. And a big boot, one kick. Takes down Edith Surreal and standing right on her chest. That hurts for guys. For women, that's much worse. Eight minutes, 45 seconds approximately. And Edith Surreal with a gravity kick. Shades of Majiku. More on that in the, uh, the AWL coming up soon. That's all I'm going to say for right now. The developments with Familia. A go behind into an inverted, oh, an inverted DDT into a neck breaker. A, 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 her variation of the lethal combination, I believe. Collar and elbow tie up, going around, a Russian leg sweep. Or maybe a Pennsylvania leg sweep, I believe that is where she's actually from. Getting her opponent away from the ropes, just barely, not trying to waste too much energy there. Maybe go for a leg based submission, yes she is. She's building something, what is she building here? An inverted figure four leg lock. Inverted figure four, and look, she's in no danger of being pinned here. There's no way to reverse the pressure on that, but there is a way to power out of it. Ooh, Ida Surreal taking the hard shot, but not going down. Irish whip into the corner. Project Titan finally on the offense. And hard, and again, she's made of metal. She's either a cyborg or a full-on robot. We don't know yet. And there it goes, Hurricane Rana. That's her education coming out, a little bit of the Lucha Libre inspirations of Edith Surreal. And going, oh, hard shot by, oh, collar and elbow tie up, sorry about that. Trying to, I'm just trying to keep up with this. A suplex toss, notice that Project Titan doesn't decide, decides not to go down with that. Doesn't let her opponent get that option. And we saw her do this a bunch of times. Into the cover, one, two, three, no. We saw Project Titan pull out that Titanobomb, that's called. And a Fight Forever chant, and this could be a heck of a feud going forward, a rivalry even, between these two competitors. Double leg takedown, almost a Matt Classic press is that chair that I'm sure it was Dr. Jigoku tossed that into the ring. He's the only one out there. Removed by the official Japanese arm drag back to the Fujiwara. It is surreal pulling back, trying to dislocate the shoulder joint, if she even still has a shoulder joint. From Project Titan, the Titanobomb, apparently that amazing one-handed, almost choke slam like power bomb into that near alligator clutch level of a cover. And wait a minute, what is this? Dr. Jigoku, problem going up, backbreaker. I thought that was gonna be a suplex or a toss or something, but a backbreaker to the, ex the exposed back. No padding there. Uh, Edith Surreal. And Edith Surreal, no, no, no. Deadlift into a power slam position. She's got it. Cover, one, two, three, no! Edith Surreal somehow able to get the shoulder up at the last possible second. So about halfway through the time limit, this crowd 
absolutely going bonkers over this. They hate this. Referee with a good call there on the rope break. You don't have to get you don't have to grab the rope. You just have to cross the plane of the ropes with any part of your body. Even surreal going up. Long way to go for an arm drag, but again, using the ropes to counter the height differential. Edith Surreal, an intelligent professional wrestler, going back, building a death lock. Yeah, she's got the death lock. Five minutes have elapsed. Five remain. Halfway through the time limit, the wrestlers can hear those time calls. They know how much time they've got to work with. Edith Surreal has been out wrestling Project Titan. And again, with Dr. Jigoku getting up on the ring, that would have been a cover. But Edith Surreal, as soon as she did not hear the one count, broke the cover went for something else, and going for that inverted figure four, surreality that's called, the surreality lock. Surreality lock in and done. Edith Surreal picks up her first win in the animated wrestling league. Welcome to the AWL, Edith Surreal. By the way, I don't know if she really uses that hold or that's a real name she uses, but that is definitely what I'm going to call it, the surreality lock. But the power slam, the power of Project Titan, impressive in this debut singles outing. And that was the death lock that led to, look at this, watch Dr. Jigoku on the right hand side of your screen. Here's Disgusting action. But Edith Surreal able to overcome with the surreality lock and pick up the victory in her AWL regular season debut. Welcome to the league, Edith Surreal. Non-title match, you see the 0-0, that means the tag team records have reset this season as they always do. The following non-title contest is scheduled for one fall in the tag team division. Introducing first, making their win rate. Classic, Matt Classic Sr. as he is also known, the inventor of professional wrestling, the world's oldest active professional wrestler, teaming with his son, a lifelong dream come true for Matt and Matt <laughs> as we await their opponents in this non-title contest. What? And Black Tiger Justice. Together they are the Tiger Brothers. Sheen Tiger Jr. no more. The mantle has been passed. Ladies and gentlemen, Tiger Mask 3 is starting off this match. The third full Tiger Mask of this dynasty here in the AWL. There have been four Tiger Masks in New Japan, three now in the AWL. He has finally not only earned his stripes, but by beating, wait a minute, cover very quickly here too, as Junior able to kick out on his own. When Matt, sorry, when Tiger Mask 3 and Black Tiger Justice defeated Tiger Mask 2 and Tiger the Dark for the AWL World Tag Team titles in the season finale of last season, season 19. I think we all understood that that would be a passing of the torch. From one generation of Tigers to the next, I didn't think we would see the official passing of the mantle, the crowning of Tiger Mask 3. One. Only one. Again, early in the match, one minute in, some high octane action from these two young studs of the animated wrestling league. Going up and, oh, went for a diving fist drop. A little pump of the legs with some extra momentum, but he missed. Kick to the midsection, another kick, caught, step over, heel kick. 
but right now the world's tag team champions going for the submission here. The Tiger's Maw clamps down on the throat of Matt Classic 2, broken up by the father. But Tiger Mask 3 not wasting any time, any momentum, goes straight into a cover. One. And again, Daddy has to come in and break it up and going up. DDT all the way around the world for that DDT, but it worked. Tiger Salt into the cover. These are the tag team champions of the world, ladies and gentlemen. And Tiger Mask 3's first match as a full-fledged Tiger Mask. Unbelievable. We get to see a moment in history, ladies and gentlemen. A big boot to the midsection. As Junior goes up overhead, wrist lock, trying to get almost a standing Kimura there. Collar and elbow tie up, kick to the stomach. And this, oh, these are just trading kicks out of the lockup here to very well trained second generation, now third generation, I suppose, wrestlers. At least in terms of dynasty, is Tiger Mask 3. He goes up and over. Elbow strike right to the head. Next generation, Tiger Faint Kick. The Tiger Faint Kick, you may associate it with the Mysterios. It was innovated by the Tiger Masks for the one, two. I'm going to be careful on that now. So. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this is tag team wrestling, even though there hasn't been a tag and a huge Torah splash. Flying through the air with the greatest of ease, the inventor of, of light heavyweight style, the original Tiger Mask. Tag is made, forearm to forearm. Interesting technique there as Matt Classic Sr., the old school, the oldest of the old school, he built the damn school. Now looking to test this new generation Tiger Mask. He is now the only person in history to have wrestled Tiger Mask, Tiger Mask 2, and Tiger Mask 3 in the Animated Wrestling League. Nobody else has ever done that. A Season 0 original around here. Irish Whip into the corner. We're going to see a tag finally on the Tiger side. No, we're not. As Matt Classic fights his way out of it, color and elbow tie up. And this has been a strike fest from the word go. Incredible action here in season 20 of the AWL. It's a season premiere. Everybody is bringing this up, bringing out everything they've got, trying to start the season off with a bang. And finally, the tag to the number one contender for the AWL Grand Championship. Going straight to the top rope. He's not going to be thinking the Tiger Salt here, the Black Tiger Salt. He's going cross body block. Interesting, diving into the repertoire as he dives onto his opponent. Cover, pulls the foot just away from the ropes. One. And you can, sell, you can see how anxious, how excited. Oh, miss with that black tiger salt. Miss clean. The number one contender to the grand champion. Going around and around and around. He goes in the aeroplane spin. Yes, Matt Classic uses the aeroplane spin. I've seen him win matches with the aeroplane spin, believe it or not. Five minutes have elapsed. Ten remain. First time call of the contest. What we have here going down in two, one, two. No, only the one count. One, one, one. I don't think there's even, no, there's been a couple of two counts. I'm wrong. But Matt Classic focusing on his opponent. There's the Classic Claw. Now if he, now this is not a singles match. But defeating the number one contender to Project Tetsu in the Grand Championship could definitely go a long way to put, towards putting Matt Classic Senior back up on top. Now one thing that's conspicuous by his absence here, Spring Tiger, the manager of the team and the new Canadian national champion. She's actually in the back getting ready for her champion showcase tag team match in our main event. The Canadian national champion will team with the Joshi champion to face the Joshi tag team champions. All four belt holders of the Joshi division in one match in our main event tonight. St oh, standing star blocked. Black Tiger just is incredibly athletic. Matt Classic Senior, it's guile. Wit, 
grit. He's got it all. He tags out his son. Matt, classic two, going to go for more of a technical style himself, I think. But closer to Black Tiger Justice in age. And the rope, okay, he's under the ropes, yet the referee sees it. And Tiger Mask three in illegally, and he gets a powerbomb suplex. Matt, classic. Matt, classic two, going something brand new. I've never seen him do that before, the powerbomb suplex. And there's the classic claw. Takes him in the standing position, but two into the ropes. And I think Matt knew that. He was going for this cover here. One, two. And Matt Classic Sr. would have been aware of his ring positioning. He knew the Classic Claw wasn't going to win it for him, but it did get his opponent down to the ground for the cover. Good technique. It just didn't work out. Collar and elbow yet again, going up and around. Around, around, around we go. Where he stops, only he knows. Black Tiger Justice. He's going up, he's thinking of that Black Tiger salt. No, leg drop. A top row version of Matt Classic's own leg drop. And what's he going for here? Going for the standing start, and again, no counter attack. But this time Matt just rolls out of the way. Perfect timing. And goes right back to the airplane spin. Matt Classic Sr the inventor of professional wrestling, showing just how good it is, he is with these basic, some would say outdated maneuvers. The iron claw, the airplane spin, the vertical suplex, the full body slam, the leg drop. He can end a match with these. He can end a match with a DDT. Into the cover, one. And a quick boot. That, oh, nice dodge there. As the illegal fighter getting involved here, Code red, or code black and yellow. Referee on the two count. Skirting the lines of legitimacy there are the Tiger Brothers. But remember, the Tiger Brothers, they've got to be thinking about Gamba's Shadows, the number one contenders in the tag team division, the, the men's tag team division, at the end of the Forge the Four tournament. Tiger Salt. It's a lion salt when Chris Jericho does it here. It's the tiger salt going up. What's he thinking? Another tiger salt off the top rope. Poetry in motion, absolutely beautiful. Into the cover, one, only one. Huge lariat as the intergenerational tag team taking control of the action. Now I'll point out your legal combatants right now are Matt Classic Senior. And Tiger Mask 3. Oh, wait a minute. The Hurricane Rana block. He's going to take that into a powerbomb. That's a match ender for Matt Classic. But he chooses not to. Matt Classic trying to clear the field here. Vertical suplex and unable to be blocked. Tiger Mask 3 unable to block that vertical suplex of his partner, but he hits. Tiger suplex, hold on. Just a little bit of work in the ropes, and he's got it. No. Matt barely rolling out of that, breaking the grip. Hard elbow shot, perfectly legal, no close fists ever from Matt Classic Sr. 10 minutes have elapsed, five remain. Collar and elbow tie up. Into the, no, trying to get back into the corner, trying to make a tag, maybe go for that tag Kogeki, the tag team attack. The intergenerational thrust kicks. I don't know if we're gonna get to see that tonight. Collar and elbow, reversal with a simple hip toss. Matt Classic Sr. Unbelievable skill, impeccable ability. Up against youth and experience, a lethal combination. And there's the claw, the classic claw, the movie taught to Fritz von Erich once upon a time. And Fritz never quite got it right, according to Matt. He will talk your ear off about the Von Erichs and how they stole his, his claw when it was a gift to his father. And into the cover. One, two, three, no! Only two with four minutes on the clock. And remember, while this is a non-title match, if the Classics are able to pin the Tag Team Champions in a non-title match, that's gonna get them into the best four automatically. They're not gonna have to wrestle a fight for four, I don't think. Into the cover, Tiger's Maw clamped back down, 
the submission hold. It's like a real tiger will go for the throat. Tiger Mask 3 rips the larynx out of his opponent for the victory. Next Generation Tiger Faint Kick, beautiful wrestling from these competitors. Here are your winners, the Tiger Brothers. Up next, ladies and gentlemen, it is main event time. Champions Showcase, Matt, what? what? What, what the hell are they doing here? Okay, um, the, the, the competitors from our last match have already left. Uh, Matt Classic Sr. was just uh, uh, staying back to, to take some pictures with some fans. And these two... Ju I know those guys. That That's the Devastation Corp. What are they doing? I, I thought he retired. I thought he was an MLW. The... Ladies and gentlemen, the Devastation Corporation, at least two of them, attacking Matt Classic Sr. in the ring. That is Max Smash Master in the ring, beating the crap out of Matt Classic after he's already wrestled the match. Blaster McMassive on the outside. And hang on, I'm being told we have some security camera footage. That's the third member of the team. That is Flex Rumble Crunch, who apparently attacked Oh, on the concrete, Matt Classic 2 on his way to the locker room, and now the chairs. Oh, good God. And we're back to the ring here. This is a multi-pronged attack. The Devastation Corporation has arrived in the Animated Wrestling League. They've invaded the Animated Wrestling League. Oh, God. Max Smashmaster with the Bam Bam Salt. And now Flex Rumble Crunch with the chairs, and this—that's that, out in the—that's out in the storage area in the back of the arena. That's on the way to the locker rooms. Collar and elbow into the into the, one of the equipment boxes. Flex Rumble. Okay, these guys—they don't work here. These guys are not part of the Animated Wrestling League. I can absolutely promise you that. We have been invaded by the Devastation Corporation. They're taking out. One of the most prominent families in the history of professional wrestling, I would argue. Certainly here in the AWL. And Flex Rumble Crunch with a choke slam on that is bare concrete. The chairs have come into play. We've we've okay, we finally got the two big men in the ring out of here. Security and medical personnel attending to Matt Classic Sr. We are seeing this is live footage from our security cameras, ladies and gentlemen, backstage. As Matt Classic 2 at least putting up a fight against Flex Rumble Crunch. He was attacked from behind after having wrestled a grueling match. A losing effort against the Tiger Brothers. I don't know, where the hell is security? Oh, and again, on the concrete... Oh god, another steel chair. This, this is disgusting. This is pathetic. The Devastation Corp. Oh, right to the stomach! That's gonna crack a rib. Oh! Matt Classic, desperate here to try and, and save himself. This is not a wrestling match, ladies and gentlemen. This is a fight. This is a fight for survival. The Devastation Corporation, And he's re resorting to the wrestler's instinct here. Going for the curb stomp. Right on the edge of that chair! Matt Classic 2 looking to at least overcome Flex Rumble Crunch. Right here, right now, pedigree on the concrete. And a split decision, you might say, in that battle. Good Lord. But well, we now have our main event. We've restored some order here in the AWL battle zone. You can see, you can hear our crew just yelling at each other, I think. Can we, can we clear up our audio channels? Thank you. Well, the show must go on, and we have our Champions Showcase match to finish off tonight. The following tag team contest is scheduled for one fall, and it is a Champions Showcase! Introducing first, they are the reigning and recently Joshi Tag Team Champions, Solo Darling. Another pair of Chikara alumna, the last Campeonatos de Parejas, Campeonas de Parejas, 
And as of last season's season finale, the new AWL Joshi Tag Team Champions. And we would like to thank Tony Khan of All Elite Wrestling for allowing uh, Willow Nightingale to complete her obligations here in the AWL. Much appreciated, Tony Elite. Classically trained Japanese professional wrestler in and of herself, Spring Tiger, making her way to the ring for the first time in her career with singles gold around her waist. The tag team champions versus the singles champions. That's what a champion showcase match is. None of the titles are on the line, but so much pride in Spring Tiger, as well as in her partner. Now there's going to be a bit of tension here because the Canadian National Championship is a contender's title. It's five successful title defenses, and Spring, Ti Spring Tiger could challenge this woman for her Joshi Championship. And her partner, making her win the ring from Veracruz, Mexico, the knockout queen and reigning animated wrestling league Joshi Champion, Lupe Perigo. What else need be said? The knockout queen, Lupe Peligro. Solo Darling starting off for the bird and the bee. Spring Tiger, the new Canadian national champion starting off. 15 minutes on the clock as a standard in non-title tag team matches here in the AWL. I'm being told uh, security have finally caught up with the Devastation Corporation. They have been escorted from the building. Uh, Matt Classic 2, Matt Classic Senior, both being seen to by our medical staff, Dr. Marcus Feelgood, AWL Senior Medical Official, uh, looking them over. We will, we hope to have a an update for you before the end of our broadcast today. If not, uh, stay tuned next week for AWL Strong and Free 22. We will definitely have an update by then. But an invasion by the Devastation Corporation, out of nowhere for no apparent reason including what looks like uh, Max Smashmaster coming out of retirement as this champion showcase match. This X uh, goes into the outside area, the ringside area. The referee begins the 20 count as all elite Willow Nightingale, reigning Joshi Tag Team Champion, faces off against the Canadian National Champion, flying knee by Spring Tiger. Willow Nightingale, a, more, a, very, a very American style of wrestling, but pure Japanese strong style on the side of Spring Tiger. Up to six out of 20. Is Spring Tiger gonna be satisfied with the 20 count? Is she gonna be satisfied with the count out? Is she gonna go out? No, she's waiting for her opponent to come back to her. Both women back in the ring and going up to a fireman's carry. The fireman's carry a great way. Oh! Elbow strike, great way to counteract a weight differential because you're spreading your opponent's weight across your shoulders, not just trying to lift them with your arms. Tag made to uh, tag made on both sides actually. Lupe Pedro, the Joshi singles champion. Oh, getting the legs out, knocked out from under her by Solo Darling. Going up and oh, a big dive, a swing and a miss. Solo Darling wisely trying to get out of the way of that but unable to do much more than mitigate the damage. And now into the submission opportunity. Uh, Lupe Peligro, she's the knockout queen. She loves that knockout version of the spear. She loves that, sp that springboard drop kick that she's knocked opponents out. She loves to use her educated feet, but she can tap you out if she has to. She can pin you if she has to. She's an expert in the knockout victory, but she will go for alternative methods. She's not a one-trick pony. That's how she's become a two-time AWL Joshi champion. 
Swing and a miss there, however. Solo Darling staying one step ahead of her opponent. And again, none of the belts are on the line here. But we get to see this dream match. It's rare that you get to see the singles champions and the tag team champions in any company, in any league, in any federation come together in a tag team match. That's what makes it main event worthy here in the Animated Wrestling League. And Springboard going for the Stinger, but countering whatever the heck that was into the Wheelbarrow Bulldog. Solo Darling showing off here. One, I mean, new haircut and new attitude, I think coming into a season as a champion. Technically a double champion if you still count the Chikara Tag Team titles. Back elbow by the Joshi singles champion. And a spear against a spear user, a spear practitioner. Maybe a bit of a mind game there. Maybe a bit of a, a, an insult intended as Lupe Peligo goes up to the top. There's action on the outside as well. Lupe Peligo, she's looking, I think, for the drop kick. She's gonna get it. No, but she gets something. That's for the story of this match. Lupe Peligo getting something out of moves that don't fully hit. Meanwhile, on the outside, a technical clinic being displayed as Spring Tiger with the joint manipulation on Willow Nightingale. Another wonderful way to counteract the weight advantage, the power advantage of Willow Nightingale. That's why we don't have weight divisions in the AWL in either gender's division. We have this catch as catch can style. There's so many ways to counter a size advantage that we don't really need weight divisions around here. These are your two legal combatants on the outside right now. As one and then both return to the ring under the bottom rope. And now here we go, oh no. Can she hit it? As she softened her opponent up, yes she has, drop kick! Springboard, drop kick, but I don't think that's enough for the knockout. Cover, referee out of position. One, Five minutes of two, Ten remain. that should have been three. That was a three count. The fans showing their appreciation for tag team wrestling. And yes, we're here in the Animated Wrestling League, we are not afraid to main event with a tag team match as we begin our 20th season. We've been on YouTube, we've been on Daily Motion, we've been on Vimeo. Now we are back here on YouTube and we are hoping that you are enjoying all this professional wrestling action here in the AWL. Leave a comment, like, subscribe. I gotta say it, I'm required to smash that subscribe button. We're over 50 subscribers now and we are looking to expand at all times. And I know it's a pathetically small channel, but I love making these videos. I love booking wrestling. I love making wrestling. I love commentating on wrestling. And I think I'm actually not as shit at it as I used to be. And from the middle rope, Spring Tiger with an opportunity. Oh, so wing and a miss. But again, going up to at least the white rope, the middle strand. Another way to counteract the height advantage. Oh! The tag is made, in comes Lupe Peligro. Willow Nightingale was too fresh to knock out a few moments ago, but now with that spear, that could do it. Into the cover, one, two, no! Two and only two, the Joshi champion. I should point out, Lupe Peligro, Spring Tiger, not a registered tag team in the AWL, maybe they should be, and swatted away! The springboard dropkick swatted away as the tag team champions make the tag. An inherent advantage to the tag team champions in every champion showcase match. And we have here back to that cover on a rope break. Speaking of height advantage, or long leg advantage at least, cover one, two. Solo Darling, she's gonna, she needs to go for that sharp stinger. That's gonna be her best option to get out of this, I think. Low drop kick to the spine. Maybe as a setup, I'm not entirely sure. Springboard goes for the springboard stinger, doesn't get it. These two, I don't believe these two have ever wrestled each other. I don't believe these, certainly uh, these two teams have never wrestled. The tag is made, in comes Spring Tiger. Gold 
in the hands of the tag team of the Tiger Brothers and in Spring Tiger herself, it's Tiger Salt. We saw Tiger Mask 3 use that to excellent effect earlier tonight against House Classic. Could that give us the upset victory for the, the two great women versus the one great team? Uriken, Uriken combination, hard hitting, almost King's Road style, into the cover. One, two, kick out, or break up, I should say. Willow Nightingale getting a, a bit of a receipt for that interference. That's the risk you run when you do that. You save the match for your partner, but you tend to take a beating. As Solo Darling fighting back to her feet, fighting back to her vertical base, field toss, grabbing onto the mask, not trying to remove it. Removing an opponent's mask would be an instant disqualification and really the dirtiest thing you can do to a mask wrestler. And here it is, going to build it up, the Sharp Stinger, Sharp Stinger, Sharp Stinger, Sharp Stinger locked in. That's how they won the titles in the first place, and that is locked in deep. A punch from Spring Tiger breaking it up, cover. The, rope, the, the arm not under the ropes, and Spring Tiger has to break it up yet again. The sharp stinger of Solo Darling, the sugar creature not effective, but a great takedown of the opponent there. Knee strike by the Joshi champion for the one, two, no, 2.9. I think we are coming to the end game of this particular game of human chess. As these counts are getting so, so deep. And here we go, the boot. We've seen her knock opponents out with this combination. Oh, right to the face. Knees and feet right to the face. Super kick, I think, to end it. The referee not calling it. Solo Darling still defending intelligently. Belly, belly, overhead suplex by the Joshi champion. And Ten here we go. Five remain. One, two thirds of the way through the time limit. You can look down at that red bar. You know how long this is gonna take, I don't. This could go to a time limit draw, but it's been a hell of a wrestling match. I'd hate to see it end that way. The only unsatisfying finish, in my opinion, running head scissors by Solo Darling. And uh, hang on a second. Okay, I am being told uh, Mac Classic 2 has been medically cleared by Dr. Marcus Fieldgood and the AWL medical team. Uh, they are still examining Mac Classic Senior uh, for concussion and um, other internal trauma. And uh, we do not have an update on Mac Classic Senior. We do know Mac Classic 2 is okay. And again, uh, the AWL commissioner is going to be looking to file charges against the Devastation Corporation. That should go without saying, I think I do have to say it. There are consequences when you jump the barricade at a wrestling show, even if you're a wrestler yourself. Hell, especially if you're a wrestler yourself. 2.9 again, Solo Darling nearly pinning the Joshi champion. If I take a look at my records here, right now the Joshi number one contenders is a longtime rival of, what do we have here? Is a longtime rival of Lupe Peligro, and that is the mistress of a thousand holds, Akira Merune, over on the Japanese branch of this company. That is AWL Hontai. DDT. DDT from a very, very low angle here. It's hard shots. Left hand. I believe I believe Lupe Peligro is an orthodox fighter, so the right hand is her dominant fist. Three tag is minutes remaining. Yes, there was a tag. The referee says that was a tag. Missing with a step-up punch. And I don't think Solo realized the tag was made. Focusing on what she thought was a legal fighter incorrectly. That could be a fatal mistake this late into the contest. Only three minutes left on the clock. Tag made to Willow Nightingale. This is why we have 15 minute time limits. Longer time limits for tag team matches. When you have the chance to tag out and get a break for yourself, tag in a fresh competitor and Spring Tiger, the Canadian national champion, the best Joshi wrestler in Canada by definition. Collar and elbow. Uh-oh, powerbomb Willow, known, known for this maneuver. Oh no, 
Oh no, that's a metal barricade. That's a bike rack with a slip cover. Good Lord. The Canadian national champion somehow back to her feet. That is pure adrenaline. As pure adrenaline, she's main eventing AWL Strong and Free. Remaining. And she knows it. This is her time. Former Joshi Tag Team Champion, first Joshi Canadian National Champion. Can she become a Triple Crown? Can she defend that title five times? Become a Triple Crown Joshi Champion. There's never been one of those in the AWL. Five successful title defenses. The big super kick into the cover. One, two, no. Solo Darling able to make the save. Solo Darling thrown out of the ring for her trouble. Spring Tiger coming into her own tonight. And I think Lupe Peligro looking at Spring Tiger thinking, um, that could be a problem in the future. And belly to belly into the, there we go. Overhead release. There's only been one cash in of the Canadian National Championship and it was unsuccessful. That was The Rock cashing in against Project Tetsu at the end of last season. That's why it switched to the Joshi division. And there we go, three count, you're out. Lupe Peligro, Spring Tiger, two great women beat one great team. As we take a look at some of that incredible wrestling action. Here are your winners, Spring Tiger and Lupe Peligro. Tune in next week for more AWL Strong and Free action, and then tune in in just a few days for AWL Hontai's season premiere. But for tonight, Koride Kimari Dao.